Welcome to Y Lecture Online. Our next example is a sphere that has a variable specific heat. And we're trying to figure out how much heat is required to raise the temperature of that sphere from zero to T. So we can assume that the initial temperature was zero, the final temperature is T, and we're trying to find the total heat required to make that temperature change, understanding that the specific heat is actually a function of the radius. So there's a constant C sub naught times the radius, that being the specific heat of the sphere. So with a varying specific heat, we are going to need some sort of integral. We are told that the density is a constant, at least in this case, they're leaving the constant density. In the next part, part two, we'll also make the density vary to see how we calculate that heat required. So how do we do that? Well, when we're talking about specific heat, there's an equation where we can say that the heat required, the Q required, is equal to mc times the change in the temperature. And of course, that is only true if the C is a constant. In this case, the C is not a constant, so that means that we now need to find the Q for small spherical regions, for example, or shell regions, not spherical regions, but for small little shells. So if you can imagine we have spherical shells that starts from the origin and builds out all the way out like this, we have a, a spherical shell that we can call a small dm. And so we need to find the heat required for each little shell and then add them all up, which means our equation then becomes dq is equal to dm times C times the delta T, of course, delta T being the difference between the initial and the final temperature. And I just dropped my little pen cap. All right. So how do we now relate dm to the specific heat? Well, let's see here. We know that the density of an object is equal to the ratio of the mass divided by the volume, which means that the mass is equal to the density times the volume, so dm is equal to the density times a small volume element. And that volume element will be the volume of that little, well, that spherical uh, shell. So how do we do that? The volume then would be the surface area times the thickness, and the thickness of that shell would be a small dr, which means that the dm can now be expressed as the density times the surface area, which would be 4 pi r squared, because that's the surface area of a sphere, multiplied times the thickness, which is dr. And now we have a relationship between dm and the radius. And that can go in here. So we now can also express c in terms of the radius. And now we can write this equation as follows. dq is equal to dm, which is the density times, and of course the density is density sub naught, times 4 pi times the radius squared times dr, that's the dm, c can be expressed as c sub naught times r, and then we still have a delta t. All right, now what we can do is kind of collect common terms. So we can say that dq is equal to all the constants here. So we have uh, density sub naught, c sub naught, times 4 pi, those are all constant, times r cubed dr, times delta t. And now what we can do is we can integrate both sides. We can integrate the dq and we can integrate this. Of course, the delta t being a constant, we can place it over here. And so all the dq summed together will be the total heat required to raise the temperature from zero to t. So that means that q is equal to, let's get all the constants, 4 pi, let's take the delta t and put it out here as well, times the integral of r to the third dr. And of course, that would be from r equals 0 to r equals r. And then finally, when we integrate that, we get q is equal to the density times c sub naught times 4 pi times delta t times r to the fourth over 4 from 0 to r. Of course, when we plug in the lower limit, we get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, we get r to the fourth. And the fourths cancel out. And so the total heat required is equal to density sub naught, c sub naught, times pi, times delta t. Now notice that delta t 
is going to be equal to t final minus t initial, which is t minus 0, which is t. That's a small 0. Let's make it a little bigger. There we go. And so we can replace delta t by t multiplied times r to the fourth. And here is the total amount of heat required to raise the temperature of the sphere from 0 to t. And that is how it's done.